Good afternoon. It's 4 o'clock, calling the Recreation JAC, JAC meeting to order. Um, there are no guests in the room, so we will start off with the amenity reports. I'll go with the first one at Branchwood. Overall condition, it was a Saturday at noon. The majority of the activity was outdoors because the weather was absolutely perfect. Indoor activity was minimal. There were six different groups playing disc golf, lots of walkers, pickleball courts were active, there was a family on the playground. The grounds really looked amazing and everything noted in last month's report was addressed, so thank you to that team very, very much. It was great, appreciate that. Areas for the review, I have nothing this month. Member interactions, Tim mentioned that the basketball hoops are at different heights, and it does look like the one closest to the pickleball courts could be taller, unless it's a optical illusion because there's that little bit of a hill there, but my basketball skills are minimal. And Tim is a, no, Tim is a friend. <laughs> My guess is it's optical illusion, um, but I will have it checked out. I've never had that concern before, but yeah. never, never say never. I, I could have tried to shoot, but it, it wouldn't <laughs> have mattered. Um, and then for additional observations, just wanted to mention that the um, disc golf tournament that took place out at Branchwood on August 27th, there were 31 contestants. While the majority of them were from all over the state of Arkansas, there were also contestants there from Missouri, Kansas and California. And for those of you not aware, a portion of their entry free fee does go directly to the POA to help cover the cost of upkeep of the greens. So thought I'd share that with you. Moving on to Loch Loman. Saturday afternoon, there was hardly any activity. There was one family using the, utilizing the softball field. However, it was getting kind of late and the Razorback game was coming on at two and I got a funny feeling I was the only one who wasn't at home getting ready. Areas for review, the AstroTurf at home plate is a trip hazard. Uh, spider webs in the women's restroom, and there were spider webs starting to form on the pavilion, but one of them's gone because I walked right into it and didn't see it. Um, member interactions, there was a lady there, Linda, walking with her mom, and her mom did walk on a walker, and they expressed concerns over the high spots off to the, well, I'm gonna say to the right, I guess as you're looking at the field, um, that are, Pause from the tree roots on the walking trail. She felt they were a trip hazard. The yeah, those, yeah, those ones over there. And then um, just looking for another update on the hatchery um, ponds, if we could get one later on. Um, Blowing Springs. Blowing Springs looked great as usual. The grounds were freshly mowed. The grass looked wonderful. The trails were clear. Um, the garden was super busy. Um, a lot of families out. It was a nice weekend. Um, areas for review. The low water bridge sign is still down right there on the rocks once you pass the, I guess, the check-in building. Um, member interactions. I spoke with Warren, who's working at the Gear Garden. He said that things have been going really, really well. Everybody's just been in a great mood, happy to be out. Um, the new lights looked really great, and everyone's been enjoying the new tables and the concrete pads. The feedback that they're continuing to hear is that members still um, would like to see more food options in the form of a food truck. So um, I'm not sure what we ended up proposing for 2023 budget, but if there's an option for a POA food truck, that would be wonderful. He says that families, uh, they lose business because once the kids are hungry, the families leave and that's people that are kind of out the door. They'd probably stay a lot longer if there, were, there was more food. Uh, but that's something that we've always continued to talk about. Um, the cups are still incredibly popular. He recommended increasing the price of them. Um, that way we could maybe slow down on inventory but still see a steady revenue stream. And then um, he also recommended placing some info in the gear garden at the check-in where people check in for the campgrounds and the RV park. He said that some people don't even realize the gear garden is uh, back there. So maybe some information up at the front. Um, we do have, they were closed, so I didn't get to check in. We do but have I'll go, a basic menu. Yeah. But um, we don't have a sign out front because there's so many other signs. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll put a sign out if there's something special going yeah. on out there. But that could be, we could maybe add a sign 
I think a sign in general too, when you pull into the um, when you pull into Blowing Spring, you kind of don't realize that the gear garden's all the way in the back. There's not really signs directing you back to it. Um, it's kind of a little hidden gem. But other than that, everything looked great. Um, no big areas of review. Can I throw a comment out about the gear garden in Blowing Spring? So I was listening to the five year plan live stream and I heard Tom mention that the Funding for the trails, the maintenance uh, that we do is taken from Blowing Springs. And I was thinking as a marketing thing, it might be worth promoting if, if it's so that uh, the, uh, the Gear Garden and or Blowing Springs funds the trails, uh, the maintenance program. Uh, you know, that message going to the mountain bikers and the mountain bike visitors and tourists would drive a lot of traffic to the Gear Garden. A lot of the revenue that we get in Blowing Springs is because of the trails. It's not just the gear garden, but the campers, mm -hmm. the tiny cabiners, and, and those, and, and that's a pretty lar large amount of, of money that to cover the whole $70,000. I don't think the gear garden alone would net enough to cover the 70 where the uh, Blowing Springs does. Gotcha. Um, so, and some of that is just operational it's it's kind of the you know from an accounting point of view it's the gateway to the trails and that's where we charge yeah. it to well perhaps it's the, uh, the supporting of the gear guard to help support the trails yeah. that message conveyed about how the marketing team might, might be worth considering agreed that's all thank you um if there's anyone in the room who has not yet met brian brian and it's michelson correct Brian Michelson is our newest committee member. He has Granton Park and Tyree Park. You're up next. And while we're uh, still on the subject of uh, Blowing Springs, specifically the Gear Garden, I, I really partook of the amenities over the weekend. I did a lot. I kayaked, I bicycled, I hiked, I hung out <laughs> at the Gear Garden after bicycling. One thing that I saw that, that disturbed me a little bit uh, at the time, and I wanted to bring it up, is uh, the good folks from Bentonville Brewing were coming in with a delivery, and they backed the van right up into where the tables were, and there's people, there's kids. It was There was probably 20 of us out there, and I'm thinking that's probably not a good way to go. Uh, certainly no spotter was being used, and I know the gentleman was being careful, and I, I don't want to cast a negative light on it but that just seems like a bad way to go. So if, if you may want to, somebody wants to mention something to somebody about that. Uh, moving on to uh, Tyree, and I, I apologize if any of this stuff is on somebody's list, and granted it was the first time that I was out there and looking at these things, so I tried to, to pull the reins back and not get too carried away. But uh, the grass was mowed, which was nice. I was out there Sunday before Labor Day. The grass was mowed. The trash cans were, were all kept up with nicely. And in fact, one uh, gentleman from uh, maintenance, Bella Vista, was out there actually taking care of the trash while I was there. Uh, and he also was taken care of. I had noticed uh, one or two days prior that the women's restroom uh, was backed up. And he took care of that while I was out there on that Sunday. So. Uh, I let him know that I appreciate him taking care of that. Uh, there was plenty of mutt mitts uh, that were available in the dispenser. Uh, and here again, I've got quite a few things on here. There's a pile of weathered bamboo that was laying about 75 feet west of the boat ramp, and I have no idea why that was there. The grass had been mowed prior to it being put there, so it was recent. Uh, I have no idea why there'd be a pile of that Not there. Construction. <laughs> it, there was nothing else with it. Uh, it's it's possible somebody was using it for fish habitat. And yeah, but, it, but it's I'll go check it out and make sure it's not there or, or get it moved. Uh, there was some debris on the picnic tables. I did uh, eat a picnic lunch while I was out there and uh, the tables had just some basic uh, organic debris from falling out of the trees, et cetera, et cetera. And there was one table, which would have been the, I believe it's the furthest east table there behind where the playground is, a uh, considerable amount of organic growth, not only on the table, but on the slab. Uh, that, uh, yeah, certainly I'm not a biologist, but uh, it's green. 
Uh, the uh, some of these things everybody probably is already aware of, but I know that the Loch Lomond sign out there on uh, Highlands Boulevard is just it's 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 done. <laughs> it's just done. Uh, and probably should be replaced. And the stop sign as you leave the park uh, is incredibly faded. The, the post is twisted, so that as well uh, probably needs to be taken care of. Uh, the grill at the southernmost table site, and I don't know if these sites are numbered for, for any kind of reference, but uh, at the southernmost site, that uh, grill is at the bottom. You can actually start seeing daylight through it, so it probably needs to be replaced. The infant swings at the playground uh, are starting to crack. There is organic growth on them. They probably, I, I wasn't fussy about my kids when they were growing up. They could eat or, you know, dirt, bugs, whatever they wanted to do. But I would probably, especially some people these days, would hes be hesitant to even use them uh, because of the condition that they're in. I did notice a screw uh, that was loose on one of the swings, and I did... Uh, it probably wasn't completely installed when it was new because there is corrosion around it now. Uh, and there again, maybe I'm nitpicking a little bit, but it's a playground set and that's a safety issue. So I felt obliged to bring it up. Uh, at the main culvert where the road crosses the main drainage culvert there at the park about halfway through, there's a considerable amount of erosion there. And I assume that's on somebody's radar at this point. Uh, I found that the, uh, uh, the main sign at the dock with all the information on it uh, is weathered. It it's, looks like it could use a little freshening up, and, and uh, I certainly would volunteer to do that uh, if nobody else, uh, if it's not on anybody else's list. The uh, sign above the, I believe it sits right above the mutt mitts, the dogs must be leached and pick up after your pets is, is faded, peeled, bent. Uh, probably could stand replacing. I noticed when I was out there, uh, uh, there's a lot of trucks out there, a lot of boat trailers, and these folks were uh, probably with good intention, but they were pulled up into the grass past the pavement. Uh, I'm assuming to try to make sure that their trailers were out of the way, even though that wasn't an issue. I don't know if we want to, if it's worth the expenditure of putting some type of a barricade at the edge of the pavement, some type of curbing, et cetera, uh, to keep them from parking up into the grass. But I did want to call that out. Uh, I did talk to a few people out of Tyree, and I, I, I feel like I'm dragging on here, so I'm going to try to wrap this up as quick as I can. Uh, one woman that I talked to, she was out there fishing with her father and her uncle, and, and uh, Apparently her and her husband go out there a lot and fish uh, from the shoreline. There was a gentleman out there walking his uh, dog with his two college-age girls. He actually lives on uh, uh, Loch Lomond. And uh, I heard you mention hidden gem, and that's the very term that he used about Tyree Park. Uh, he doesn't want anybody to know about it because he enjoys having it to himself. Uh, Certainly was a lot of loading and unloading at the ramp, uh, all types of boats, uh, fishing boats, pontoon boats, kayaks, uh, canoes, stand-up paddle boards. There was all kinds of activity there. Uh, I would like to maybe talk to someone uh, who's ever in charge of this. And here again, I'm not sure where those lines are drawn, what is lake, what is park, who belongs to what. Uh, but the trash cans out there, they're, they're old school galvanized trash cans. So with the lids being crushed down, they are a little difficult to open and close. I, I know not from personal experience, but I've witnessed it. If uh, it's too hard to get into a trash can, guess what happens with the trash? And uh, with the condition that they're in, they're also tearing up the top of the bags as they're being taken on and off, which can make it difficult for those who are empty in those. So believe it or not, those trash cans are like three, $400 a piece. To, to get the really good ones. Yeah. So we're systematically going through and replacing the ones that are first in the worst condition mm -hmm. and two that get the most usage. So Right. And yeah. And but it's going to take a while because there's a lot of trash cans out there. Absolutely. Uh, I won't go on too much more about Tyree at this time. Moving on to Grant Park, I found Grant to be in much better shape here. Again, it was freshly mowed for the weekend. I think that that's fabulous, the trash. 
uh, the gentleman, Michael, who was taking care of the trash, Tyree, I ran back into him at Cranton doing the same thing, taking care of all that. Uh, there's just a little bit of litter in the, the outhouse on the floor, uh, nothing major. I did notice that the, the uh, door uh, in use indicator, for lack of a better term, uh, the sticker could probably stand to be replaced. The red is showing, but the, I believe it should be green, is completely gone. So it might be a little misleading. Uh, yeah, outhouse was, was stocked. The picnic, area, uh, picnic tables were clean. Uh, there was some debris in the form of, of uh, that. There was a couple of wash rags over there at two of the different picnic sites. One of them had just been used. I was a little concerned. It was a holiday weekend and no one was out picnicking, but someone had been there. Uh, there were some fresh uh, uh, squash, onions, et cetera, laying on the ground around a picnic table, and there was hot coals in the grill. So I know that it had been used. Along the lines of the grills, and I do have them listed in the report here. I'm kind of just skimming over this. Uh, but two of those grills can be pulled right off the pedestal. I would assume we want those physically attached to those pedestals. And this would go back to where uh, I'm not exactly sure where the line is uh, as far as what we should be looking at, but I did, I checked the fish cleaning station at Granton and it was in good shape, it looked really good. Uh, talked to a ranger while I was out there. Uh, there was a gentleman who was trying to launch his subs. I noticed he did have out of state tags and he was called out for no registration on his subs. I don't know what kind of mood he was in when he left, but I know that he did not put them in the water after something was mentioned to him about it. Uh, yeah, there again, I won't go in. Uh, there's a sign out there that could stand to be replaced. It's faded, it's dingy, it's the uh, please do not deposit fish remains, or, or please deposit fish remains in the creek channel. One safety issue that I saw, and uh, here again, not knowing where this line is, but this was actually on the boat dock. There is a board that's warped. Uh, it is definitely a trip hazard. And uh, those docks, uh, at least at Grant, don't have much for handrail on them, so somebody could end up in the water uh, in that case. Uh, I did not uh, interact with any members, out, or uh, excuse me, with anybody out there. Uh, there was a lot of activity, but it was strictly uh, launching and landing boats, just it was nonstop, so they were busy as well. Uh, I did check the kayak rack, everything was secure, everything looked good over there. Picked up a little trash in that area, a couple odds and ends. Uh, and that's about all I have. Sorry to have taken so much time. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much, we appreciate the detail. Uh, the next amenity is Lake Avalon, which is Cindy, and she was going to try and hit the Zoom. I do not see her, so I will read her report for her. Uh, overall condition, everything is clean and well kept. With beach season over, that area is cleaned up and packed away. I am happy to see the volleyball net remaining up for a while longer. Areas for review, she had nothing to report. Member interactions, even on an off-season weekday, there were two boats docked, one couple fishing, one couple enjoying a picnic lunch, and a few other cars in the lot, possibly out on the trails. This park is always in use. No additional observations. Moving on to Metfield, Macy. Yeah, um, I pretty much have the same thing. I, there was, um, overall, everything was clean and orderly. Um, lights were on at Metfield Complex which made it very welcoming. Um, four people were using the machines. Member interaction, I had none. Areas of review, I have none. Um, the park overall looked good. Um, pool looked lonely with no one using it now. So that was kind of a... <laughs> um, notice the progress on the pickleball courts. It looked like the concrete was just recently poured, so that, that's coming along. Um, no one was in the park, surprisingly. I went yesterday and I was really surprised that nobody was out in that park. Um, so I wasn't able to speak with anyone. Area for reviews for, the, for both areas, I, again, have nothing. Everything looked really good. 
that's all I have. Macy, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next is Reardon Scott. Well, this is my last report on Reardon Hall as it will close next Monday, um, but definitely looking forward to it reopening. Um, Reardon was pretty quiet. I got to meet Joan over there. We had a nice little chat, um, but things are moving out. There was a dance class going on, so looks like it's all going to be ready for the remodel when, the, when they take off. Uh, over at the tennis courts, there wasn't much action going on over there. Um, Jake was out, so I didn't get to talk to him, but I did talk to the person there at the desk, and they said that uh, the Labor Day mixer was a good success. They had about 44 tennis players that were involved in that event, so it, it went real well. Um, just noticed some privacy screening issues on court four. Don't know if they'd been out there recently, but some of the tie wraps had come off, so there were some corners loose. Um, the pool over at Kingsdale was still open, um, but it was odd because everybody was on one side of the pool. They were all on the adult side of the pool. There was nobody on the other side of the pool where the slide was, so it's probably due to all the kids being in school, but that looked kind of funny. Um, pool's last day is the 18th, so this weekend will be the last for everything over there at Reardon, for both Reardon Hall and the pool. Uh, quite a few people out on the playground, though. Got to talk to a few people over there. They said that they really enjoy the playground, like bringing the kids out, letting them have fun. Um, nobody was out on the uh, golf course, but the golf course still looks really good. No issues over there other than the grass thing that I talked about last meeting. Hopefully it'd be nice if we could overseed that and make it look more like a golf course, but I, I don't think that's critical, but it would it would be nice to make it look better instead of all of the weeds that kind of grew up over the summer when it got hot. Um, did see somebody playing basketball, though. First time I'd ever seen anybody using the basketball court over there at Reardon. Um, got to talk to him a little bit. He's actually a new member, new resident of Bella Vista, moved here from New York. Um, so he didn't know a lot about the amenities and all the different things that the POA had to offer, so it was nice talking with him and getting to explain some of the things to him and Hopefully he'll get to enjoy some of those. Um, other than that, I didn't see anything else. I, I was going to talk to Joan about the tree that was down, but when I talked to um, the lady inside, she said you had already know about it. So that was it. Scott, thank you. Appreciate it. The next amenities are Lake Ann Park and London Park. Mary? All right. So um, I had a great day out with Logan yesterday. We got to check out both of my parks, which was great. Um, London always looks good, super clean, nothing needs to be done there. Um, I got to talk to a young gentleman that was out there fishing. He's lived here for eight or seven years, and he says he comes out there quite frequently. He said the only thing he wishes we could do is control the depth of the water. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Because he says he likes it better when it's hotter out because, like, the water's further out that way, so he has more room to fish on the ground instead of off the dock. So I was like, very well then, I'll let them know that. <laughs> okay, um, and then down on the dam side, it looks like the orange safety fence is down. It looks like the sinkhole's been filled in. It's looking really good over there. The porta potty was in good condition. Um, the only area of concern that I saw at all was actually at Lake Ann Park. There's like a picnic bench there, an old cement one, and it's like falling apart. Like you can see the rebar coming out of the seat area. So that probably needs to either, it probably just needs to be replaced with a new picnic bench at this point, because I think that's what we're doing with the old cement ones, correct? So one of them's in really good, the other one, it needs to go. As, as they deteriorate, yes, we're yeah. replacing them. So I think that one's probably on its last leg. Is that the one underneath the tree? Yeah, it's the one underneath the tree closest to the road. That one there, like the bench seat on the outside towards the road, it's like broken off that back corner. So you obviously know what I'm talking about. And you can see the rebar coming through there. So I think it's just like time. So, but other than that, everything looks fantastic. So we just had a great day yesterday. It was really awesome getting out there. So that is it. Mary, thank you. Um, Chris, you want to do both of yours, Tanyard Creek and then the Trails and Greenway? I certainly will. Yes, I will. I went out to Tanyard Creek this past Saturday, and it was busy. It was full. Most of the people were in the creek swimming in multiple places, and there were some people standing around the fall picnicking and stuff. We had a small event going on at the, in the pavilion, 
And the front of the parks look really good. These are well groomed, trash is cleaned up. And the restrooms were in pretty good shape for the relative amount of use that they've been uh, under during the day. Got really nothing to, uh, to uh, put on the um, action list here. You know, Randy Ham's group's going to be back out there again soon with the volunteers and stuff doing their thing. Um, and then I'm going to get together with them, uh, work with them a little bit, see if I can convey some of their concerns back in at that point. I was out there, I did notice that that one social trail that was steep and vertical has been blocked off and erosion control was put in place. So I'm sure that was your team's handiwork. And uh, well, it, it looked good. It's uh, it certainly did the job there. So the uh, the erosion problem didn't occur. Looks good. I talked to a gentleman, and he says he just enjoys bringing his family there for swimming. It's cool off in the in the summer. Looks like they didn't have many other resources other than to come to the creek there and do such. So that's Tainted Creek. Going on to the trails. There was a fast volunteer group work day uh, late in August, and they tackled the Rago Trail, one of the feeders in, inside the back 40 system. General maintenance, raking, weed whacking, um, light repairs. Um, the Greenway under high use. It's, it's always busy now. People are using it, especially with the bridge open back up across the Wishing Springs area going into Bentonville. Folks could go from Metfield now all the way to well, if you can get through Bentonville, through the detours, you can get all the way to the U of A if you want on the trail now. So that's kind of cool. I do have an issue of concern on the trails. All along, I've noticed that folks, houses, build access trails down to the back 40. And yeah, most of them are pretty good. But I saw one recently that worried me a little bit. It was very wide. It was straight down and it was lined with big fallen trees. So it looked uncharacteristic to the rest of the trails, and it is certainly going to be a major erosion problem. So it might be time to consider that if everyone wants to put a trail from their house into the back 40 trails and they have to access it through common property, that some standards or some permitting is put in place. Because if it did get out of hand, and there were hundreds of these access trails, that's going to erode away our beautiful forest. It's just going to fall apart. So it might be time to start considering something like that. And that's all I got. Chris, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the gun ranges are Matt Zimmerman, and he was unable to make it. So Kathleen's going to read his report. Thank you. All right, there are six people actively shooting on the gun rifle range. Two were shooting pistols, and the other four were shooting rifles. I was the seventh person to sign in, and it had only been open for just over an hour. Everything looked great and clean. The gun range area is in good shape. The bathrooms were clean. The shelters and bench, benches are in good shape. Concrete seating and tables and the rifle range are in good shape. Parking area is in good shape, and the area around it is clean. The walkways were clean and free of any debris. As I was leaving, more members were showing up to use the gun and rifle range. The skeet trap range is very full. The parking lot was full and most, almost all the parking spots uh, were getting filled. The range was super full, very nice and clean area. Areas for review. On the pistol range, the yellow marking of stop, no shooting is faded and needs repainted. This might be an area to address they know when to let other shooters there so they know when to let other shooters uh, know they're crossing the area to enter the range. Just a little trash from the targets, but figured it'd be picked up as it was getting windy for the day. Member interactions. Uh, spoke with one member and said this time of the year he starts using the rifle range a lot since it's coming up on hunting season, and this is a great area for him to practice. That's it. Thank you, Kathleen. Appreciate it. So that wraps up our amenity reports. So we will move on to the POA staff reports. Tom, would you like to start for us? So um, some updates on the numbers for the year um, through the end of the month, uh, last month. Uh, activity cards are up uh, 1,900 compared to prior year. So that continues with the same trend we've seen all year long of just uh, constant growth. Uh, guest cards 
are also way up, uh, 4,400 more than prior year, uh, which is consistent with what we've been seeing, and boat registrations are up 550, 550 over prior year. Majority of those are kayaks. So we're definitely seeing a lot of increase across the board in activity. Um, last week, uh, we had the five-year strategic plan presented to the community. Uh, that video is available on our website. We encourage everybody to view it. Uh, two surveys have gone out to the membership, one regarding Berksdale South and the other regarding the five-year plan. We would hope that uh, people, will pro our community will provide us with feedback. Uh, just so people are aware, with the five-year plan uh, survey, the initial one went out last week. There was a issue with one of the links and we had to disable it. Uh, and uh, a new uh, survey went out today. So uh, we quickly became aware of the issue and uh, as opposed to trying to fix it, we just disabled it and then restarted the whole process all over again. So uh, if you haven't received your uh, survey, please uh, give us your input. It's very important. And that's it. Thank you, Tom. Rick? So, to review the Lake Avalon drawdown uh, again, which I'll be doing throughout the fall and winter. And it's nice to hear that we have at least one person that was happy with the Lake Ann drawdown. So um, there you go. <laughs> right? One person. Uh, so we're going to uh, begin that on November the 14th. The goal is three inches per day. We should have it down by early December, barring any any heavy rain events, uh, and it will be allowed to refill beginning March 6th. Uh, again, there, the, the work we're going to be doing is um, removing any leaf pack and silt that might be in the beach area. That'll help prevent future algae outbreaks in that area. Um, we'll need to remove a gravel bar that's adjacent to the boat ramp and uh, kind of makes an appearance every few years after flood events, and then there's some concrete work that needs to take place at the base of the spillway, where it, where the spillway turns more into a, a, a creek. Uh, that area needs to be fortified a little bit. The Lake Ann sinkhole, uh, the construction fence has been removed. The lake is coming up slowly, and the ramp has been usable for most of this time, but it is, uh, it is safe for most boats now, and most private docks are again usable. The POA rangers are beginning to wind down as the summer season kind of fades. Um, we are starting to let a few of those guys go, the seasonal rangers. We uh, had, a, had a maximum of 12 during the summer. We're currently at nine, and we'll let a few more go in October. Uh, the numbers for July were 4,267 contacts, 176 non-members removed, uh, 565 boat contacts, and 138 and a half hours on the water. Um, I'm sorry, th those numbers are August numbers. Um, and then that uh, is down quite significantly from July, but uh, as, as things wane for the year, we kind of expect that. Uh, grounds maintenance, keeping up with the facility usage has been an issue this summer, staffing. Uh, for a number of reasons has, has, uh, has been kind of difficult and um, COVID is still a thing with us um, that we've been dealing with. We have, <clears throat> we have identified three grills that do need to be replaced uh, and we've got those ordered and they'll be replaced this fall. Um, there are some maintenance issues at the ball field I did order um, a new home plate area. It's going to be, it's on its way. Um, and right now, uh, at this very moment, we are uh, seeking our variance from the city zoning board on the dock that we want to install at Lake Windsor. Um, don't foresee any issues with that. And as soon as we get the green light, we'll have our uh, contractor make our contractor aware and they can get started on that. Um, let's see. And then our uh, fish ecology area, 
We do have 1,700 channel catfish remaining uh, from, from the rescue attempt we made earlier this spring. Uh, they're now five to six inches long. We're going to hold them as long as we can this fall and then, and then stock them out into the lakes. And we've had no lake fertilization in the last month and very limited uh, vegetation control has been necessary. And John will hit the gun range. Uh, Rick, hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the ramp or the, or the dock for Lake Windsor, where is it going to be? I'm uh, midway on the dock, almost exactly halfway. Uh, there are at, at the dam. You at the dam? At the dam. Okay, thank there you. There are at least two uh, field trips that happen every year, and the fly tires conduct uh, uh, fishing classes for those kids. They. Kids get a, a, a feel for lake ecology and the science behind all that and, and, and that kind of thing, but then they also get to fish. And so that's, that'll, have, that'll create one big dock where they, they can manage everyone. Is it going to be like the one at uh, Lake Avalon? It is, um, it's going to look more like the swim dock at, at Avalon. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, but, uh, but yeah. As it should, because that, that's awesome. Yeah, and the, um, uh, let's see, I, I lost my train of thought on that, but, um, uh, and we are getting help from the uh, fly tires on, on the uh, cost of that, so. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. John? Uh, so the first thing I'll report on is uh, last month I told you guys about the open house that we were going to have. We did have the event. We had an outstanding showing at that event. We were blown away at the amount of people that came out uh, and just had interest in the gun range. Uh, we conservatively estimate we had about 120 people, which is a lot more than we thought we were going to actually have out there. Uh, but in all honesty, we lost the ability to keep count very quickly. So it, it could have been a lot more than that, uh, realistically. But uh, I think everybody had a good time. Everything went well. All of my staff was just blown away about with the amount of interest that everybody was showing. So we're, we're really happy about that. Uh, of course, after the open house, all of our classes filled up. So we're, we're kind of at capacity right now for classes. Range attendance is starting to pick back up as hunting season and the cooler weather is gonna creep back in. So we know that, uh, that the ranges are gonna be a bit busier. Uh, and then I, I think I've reported on this last month as well, but we're still a bit short staffed. Hopefully we'll be back up uh, to full staff very soon. That's all I got. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Joan? Thank you. He's, he's brand new and he already remembers to turn the mic on. So this is Clay Llewellyn. It's his fourth official day on the job and he is our new rec ops manager. And I'm going to throw to Clay and let him share a little bit about his background. All right. Uh, so yeah, my name's Clay. Uh, I moved, my family and I moved out here October of last year. Um, I have been in the field of recreation full-time, part-time for 21 years. Um, I was part-time for about 10 years and full-time for 11 years back in Southern California. Uh, moved out here and was with the Boys and Girls Club for the last 10 months down in Bentonville. Um, and then this opportunity presented itself, and uh, here I am. So I'm, I'm very excited. We are residents as well. Um, so to, to kind of work where you live is, to me, it's something a little bit extra special. Um, and then to get back to kind of that traditional recreation setting that I've been in for so long, um, I'm excited. It, it's an opportunity that I think is, is going to be a great fit um, for my family and I, and I hope I, I serve the community. As, as well as I envisioned. Clay, welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, we've been down a couple of managers, so we're, we really enjoy having Clay on the team already. Um, some of this was already mentioned. Uh, I've got um, the last day at the at Kingsdale Pool is this Sunday. We're going to have an informal farewell party. We do that every year. I guess we took a year off with COVID, but. Um, the regulars really like us to kind of celebrate the last day, and they're sad, but they're uh, very appreciative of our team there. So we do, um, we provide hot dogs for them for free and for anybody that is there that day. And then they usually bring a covered dish, and, um, you know, people that know each other just enjoy the last day together. So um, that's a little bittersweet. 
Uh, the following Saturday, the 24th, will be the Dog Days of Summer. That's our partnership with the Bella Vista Animal Shelter. We've done this for a number of years, and it is where the dogs take over the pool. They get in the activity pool and the waiting pool, and we let the chemicals run out uh, next week so that it is safe for them. And it's a fundraiser for the animal shelter. I think it's $10 per dog, so I hope you guys can attend that. <clears throat> Uh, Metfield, we're getting ready over there for the changes that will happen when Reardon Hall goes dark. Um, we've already moved out all the furniture in the lobby because we will have um, a few pieces of fitness equipment out in the lobby to expand uh, the ability to serve our members. <clears throat> um, we are moving all of our classes that were at Reardon over to Metfield, and that will start the week after next. Uh, the week of the 19th, and that schedule is out both online and uh, hard copies available at, at both facilities. <clears throat> and we are moving some equipment, not just from Reardon over there, um, to try and accommodate more people as that facility. It will obviously get busy through the year. And I've gotten some feedback from members. Um, about maybe some of the equipment they'd like to see. And, and in some cases, we're, that was our plan to accommodate uh, like more free weights. That was always my plan to move that over there. But we do have some limitations. We can't add a lot of cardio equipment because of the electrical needs for that. But we're going to um, expand where we can. Um, all of my team, as is I'm sure Rick and John, we're uh, working on budgets um, over the next month, so that's pretty uh, labor intensive and, and yet fun in some ways too. I mentioned to this group before, we are budgeting for new playground equipment at Reardon. We know that's outdated. Um, and so when we get a little further down the line, uh, Clay's actually gonna work on that project with me. Um, my goal is to have two to three um, versions that uh, some of the people on this committee can weigh in on, especially those of you that have kids. And um, I know Cindy has um, put in some information on that as well. So more to come on that. Um, as mentioned earlier, the park is extremely busy. We're getting ready for our big event, Flea in the Park, which is October 7th and 8th. I've had a lot of interest in vendors, and I'm finalizing all that now. We're basically full, but people are still trickling in, and you always know that you're gonna have some people cancel at the last minute, so you wanna try and work towards that. We're looking forward to that family-friendly event. If you've never been to it before, because we were on a hiatus for two years, but it was popular for, we did it two, three years before that. Um, it's a free admission. Um, we run shuttles in and out of the park because there's very little parking in the park. Obviously, people will be able to go in on foot and bike as well. Um, we will have um, the Gear Garden open that day. We'll have some live, those days, it's a Friday, Saturday. We'll have some live music. Um, we will have a kids' activity zone. We have a, a photo op opportunity. We'll have some vintage cars on display. So whether you want to shop, flea market, or you just want to come out and enjoy, uh, hopefully we'll have great weather. So. You'll see more marketing on that as we get closer. I um, want to give an update on the trail that's going in behind the new Fat Tire building or kind of adjacent uh, behind Casey's. That trail is largely finished from the actual loop, which is about a half mile loop. It's surface concrete with a stamped effect into it with undulations. Um, and while we don't have the parking lot done, that's going to be worked on along with the tunnel. You probably noticed that the, there's some holdup on Reardon, which is going to get fun in certain times of the day. Um, but I'm thrilled with how that trail went in. Um, I was out there this weekend checking on it. You may see in the grove of trees in the middle, you may see some um, raised area and a uh, concrete platform. We will be they will be putting in a pavilion there. It's going to be a small pavilion. It'll just be drop-in only. I'm not planning on renting it. It's so that people that are there want to watch their family, maybe use the trail, or just want a shaded area, a place to drop in. So that'll be going in in the future. It's going to be fairly small. It's going to be a 10 by 20, I think. 
um, but it'll be very nice. So more to come on that. Also, just for some people that were interested, um, the plan still is to have a playground area, but it won't be a traditional playground. We are looking on at putting it more of a natural setting into those groves of trees. So it'll be boulders and the kinds of things that kids really want to get dirty on and play on, and it'll fit in well with that with that park area. So it's pretty exciting. And that was all um, grant money that was gifted to the city and the POA um, has gifted the, the land for that. Um, two more projects that we're working on. Pickleball, Macy mentioned. Um, just uh, I'll update, the concrete is down. It is curing. It has to cure till for another week or so. And then we hope to uh, start the surfacing. And then lastly will be the fencing. Uh, depending on weather, depending on contractors, I anticipate it will be done hopefully right around the end of, the, of October. So that's exciting. And then lastly, my team is already gearing up um, not only for Flea in the Park, but we um, haunt the mini golf course. Uh, it'll be our second year. It was a big hit last year. We call it the Not So Haunted Mini Golf Course. And so for the two weeks leading into Halloween, the course will be decorated and we will have some lights um, out there at night, whether you want to golf or you just want to come out and walk around and people do light during the day too. So that is about it for us. Joan, thank you. Quick question, the budget, do you have a ETA for when it would be completed? No, uh, except that it's due to Tom in early October okay. and then Tom and the board have to do final approvals. And what is that, the end of? Yeah, it has to be to the board by the end of October. Uh, so uh, we'll present it to the community soon and thereafter. Thank you, appreciate it. And then finally, Judy from marketing, let me know that she cannot be here tonight. Do you have some things for her? No, okay. Okay. For those that couldn't hear, she, there's someone sitting in for Judy taking notes. This is Ash Wood. Okay, I can't see very Ash well. Ash is the director of marketing for those of you that haven't had a chance to meet her yet. And she's uh, a great addition to the POA team. She's been here for three whole months ish. Okay. Thank you, Ash. I appreciate it. Um, so that'll wrap it up. Does anyone have any final comments, concerns, questions they want to bring to light? Yeah, just a reminder, if you have not yet voted, please do so. Uh, every vote counts. Sounds good. This will bring the meeting to a close. Thank you all.